everyone, it's Kim again. Um, today I thought I would just film my grocery haul really quick and just show you a couple of the things that I bought at the grocery store and then tomorrow on Sunday I will film a meal prep video and just include this as part of the footage. So our list this week is breakfast. I think we're going to have egg sandwiches and oatmeal. Lunches, we're gonna have sandwiches and chips, bean burritos and salads. Dinner, cheeseburgers, sauerkraut and kielbasa, brats and chips. Maybe um, we'll have fries, I did pick up some fries. Um, we're gonna have sheet pan chicken, chicken tacos, and then salmon with veggies and baked potatoes. And for snacks this week, I'm gonna have watermelon, grapes, some nectarines, apples, I have some tuna wraps and I picked up some celery so I can make some buffalo chicken dip. So that is what we're gonna have this week. And as I make those, I will include, um, maybe I'll try to film a couple of my dinners this week. We'll see how it goes. So without further ado, um, I'll just kind of come over here and get started. Um, picked up a watermelon. I have a five pound um, package of chicken. Grab some pretzels. I think these are four points per serving. Um, looks like a serving is about one ounce, um, 18 pieces. Um, we need some butter in a bowl, because sometimes you just need butter in a bowl. Um, I grabbed four nectarines. Grabbed another pack of the Velveeta cheese slices. Again, these are only one point per slice and they are delicious. I was so excited when I found out that these were only one smart point and I could use these instead of the fat-free slices. Um, picked up some Polish kielbasa, um, grabbed two packages of that. Not sure on the points, um, I know I'm going to make this for my husband. So I'm not sure how many points that is going to be and I'm not even sure if I'll be eating this one the same day, but I picked those up. Grabbed a thing of coffee creamer. One smart point, one tablespoon, and that's really all you about, about all you need. Um, four bananas because I already had some in the cabinet. Grab some beef jerky just for snacking. I think this is one point per serving. If that comes in any differently, I'll um, put that here in the video. So some are ours, and some are snacks for my grandson. Grab another package of the Olay Extreme Wellness one point wraps and it's just because um, I'm planning on making some more of those bean burritos that I had showed you in my videos yesterday and the day before I'm not sure which day it was that I posted that next up is I got a 10 pound bag of russet potatoes we're gonna have like I said baked potatoes and I may go ahead and mix up a batch of mashed potatoes and freeze those Got another package of this Gilbert's Aloha Chicken Sausage. Um, I also picked up a Caprice one the other day that we're gonna give a try. Um, these come out to be five, um, sorry, three points per sausage and these are delicious. I have the two point hot dog buns. So I'll have one of these and the sausage and that will only be five smart points. Grab some hard salami for my husband some turkey breast for the both of us. Also picked up some of this everything Italian bread. Now if you haven't had this before, it is one point per slice, three points for two slices, so worth it. This bread is delicious. I have some Canadian bacon, um, zero smart points for one slice. Um, grab some hillbilly bread for my husband. Um, I'm using the 35 calorie Aunt Millie's potato bread. And that one, the potato bread, is two slices, two smart points. Again, picked up the celery so that I can have that with my buffalo chicken dip. Grab some lemon lift black tea. I'm gonna make some iced tea out of this and see how it works out. Um, suggestion for my grandson, he said it's really good. Grab some Famous Days barbecue sauce because we were totally out of barbecue sauce. Skim milk, just wanted to grab that so I'd have it in the fridge. I also have my unsweetened vanilla almond milk that I normally rely on. So have this as a backup. 
just because nobody else in my family drinks the almond milk except for me. Grabbed a big package of the um, Great Value Crinkle French Fried Potatoes. I think this is a five pound bag. Um, these are four smart points per serving. It's about 15 potatoes, so it's really, really good for the French fries. Got my husband some barbecue chips to go alongside his, um, his sandwiches for his lunches. And then I was out of gum. So I picked up some sugar-free gum just to throw in my purse and then to have at my desk at work when I'm looking for something just uh, to kind of occupy myself to kind of get me through some of those snacky cravings. So that's what I bought this week. Um, I'll pan back out and just kind of walk you back down through here. And then again, I will include this footage when I do my meal prep tomorrow. All right, see you then. Bye. All right, to get things started, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my steamer basket inside my Instant Pot. I'm gonna throw in maybe a cup, cup and a half of water in the bottom here. And if you don't use an Instant Pot, which is um, just a brand of a pressure cooker, an electric pressure cooker, you have to have water in the bottom in order to get it to come to pressure. So I'm just gonna throw some eggs in here going to use these for snacking and maybe I'll make an egg salad one day this week. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Super simple. We're going to throw the lid on. And normally I would bring you down, but I think you've seen me cook in my Instant Pot enough to see what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to bring this down to six minutes. And then make sure that our button here is on sealing. And then we're just going to let it do its thing. So it's going to come to pressure. It's going to cook for six minutes. I'm going to let that sit in there and just um, do sort of a natural release. So it's going to cook for six minutes and then I'm going to wait an additional six minutes before I release the pressure. And then what I'm going to do is dump those into an ice bath and they peel like a dream. So stay tuned. <clears throat> okay, um, I decided to jump in the shower really quick, which is perfect timing because I didn't have to watch my eggs, which is one of the reasons why I make my eggs in my Instant Pot. And as I was coming upstairs, my float valve for the pressure had already dropped. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up now. And voila, there are our eggs. Hopefully you can see those really quick. I'll try to bring you down. And our eggs look good. So I'm gonna throw those into an ice bath and then I will get them peeled. All right, we're gonna go ahead and cut our watermelon up. And I don't think I said anything before I started my eggs, but um, welcome to Sunday meal prep. I'm gonna go ahead and get my watermelon done and hopefully keep it in the camera frame because I know that last time I did that, um, I was out of view. So we're gonna go ahead and Get that started. Grab my other phone here. And find my timer function. So 
got my timer here. Um, actually, a stopwatch. I guess that's what we need. All right, so I don't know if you can, let's see. Can we see that? How's that? All right, so let's have a little fun today. We've got our watermelon. I have a nice knife, hopefully this one will work. I haven't used this one before with my watermelons, so I just told my husband today that we need to sharpen my knives because I need a really sharp knife to keep going, so let's get started. And I think this one will work fine. Hopefully I don't knock over my phone. I'm just gonna toss these right in the sink just to save time. Now that I know I'm being timed now, I'm going a little slower. And of course, this knife is not going to be the perfect one. It's going to slow me down just a bit. Let me flip over and grab a different one. Let's see if this works a little better. That's better. So. There are people on the internet that can do a whole watermelon in just a minute or less. Now, they are working in a professional kitchen. They do have moving boards that they can just kind of toss things. They're not really having to move the rinds at all. So, it does take you a little longer at home, but we've almost got it peeled. We're just over a minute. Trying to cut the little pieces out over here on the edge. This is our last large section here. Cut this off. I'm just gonna do a little trimming here on the side. I'm gonna flip it over. Ah. I um have pulled a muscle on my side last weekend and it's finally starting to feel a little bit better but just the movements of moving this watermelon around and trying to flip it over a little bit difficult today so we had this little piece that fell off i'm just going to go ahead and grab this and slice this up chunk it and just throw it in my little bowl here so it's kind of nice we got a little flat spot to work with so I'm just gonna go ahead and start chunking this. I'm gonna flip my knife over here and put that in. I was hoping to do this in under three minutes. I don't think I'm gonna make it. It's gonna be more like three and a half minutes. What do you think? Don't want to get the pieces too big because I don't want to have to cut them when I'm eating them during the week. I just want to be able to sit down with a fork and enjoy them. I'm cut the rest of my slices here. So those are done and ready to go. Try to speed up the process a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be four minutes. I think I'm going to have to do this more often because I think that it might keep us going and keep this more interesting than you guys see in me. Because I will be cutting watermelons all throughout the season. Um, this is one of my favorite fruits and it's so easy just to grab and go. Alright, so there we go. Three minutes. 50 seconds. How's that? That didn't take long, huh? Just wanted to show you that it's so easy to do and have your watermelon prepared. So I've got an entire watermelon chunked up, ready to go, and I just have to separate it into bowls during the week. So we got our watermelon done. Let me see what's on our list and we'll get started on our next Sunday meal prep item. 
Okay, um, next up we're gonna do, can you guess? That's right, egg sandwiches. Um, what would one of my Sunday meal preps be without the egg sandwiches? Um, I'm gonna make a couple with bacon, and I also have some Canadian bacon that I'm gonna use for the rest. Um, I didn't realize I was running so low on my bacon crumbles, um, which you can see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit, and we will go ahead and get these started. So, first up, we're going to spray our egg containers. Um, if you haven't seen these before, or you haven't seen me use these egg containers before, um, you can get these at Walmart, Target, um, I think I even seen them at Menards. So, just go ahead and um, pick a few of those up. And it's easier, I like to have two of them. I think, um, I always drop at least one shell. Um, I always pick up, I think it's good to have two because then you can put them in the microwave and as you're getting one ready, you can have the other one prepped and ready to go. I also found it easier that if, wow, I am just really cracking these eggs funky today. I have not had this hard of a time. Normally I can crack all five without skipping a beat. Um, I will leave this in the video just so you see that. Sometimes I'm not good at cracking eggs. I have a shell in there, but I can't get out. There it goes. Wow. This must be really fresh eggs or something because they're just not coming apart. There we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start adding our seasonings in. So we're gonna go ahead and add our pepper. I just have a regular old pepper grinder here. I'm gonna put that in here. And like I was saying, sorry, I got interrupted there for a second. Um, I like to go ahead and do all of these at once so that I'm not having to stop, rewash my hands. Um, it kind of slows you down if you're not doing them in batches like this because then you have to stop, you have to crack the next egg, especially if you're only working with two of these. Um, you can, like I said, it's just faster. I'm sitting here trying to rationalize it with you, I think you understand. So I'm gonna grab a fork and I'm gonna stir these. And then I'm gonna microwave this in the microwave for 45 seconds. So after I get these microwaved, I'll come back and show you what they look like. And then we're gonna let these fully cool down. Um, you wanna let these cool down completely because of the fact that if you put them on your English muffins before they're completely cool, it will make your English mu muffins soggy. So you don't want soggy muffins. Trust me, they are not delicious. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, our eggs are done. I have three with bacon, and then I have four just regular eggs. Again, I'm gonna either put Canadian bacon, and I think I might even have some ham, some low-fat ham in there. So I'll put one of those, one of the two of those on the breakfast sandwiches, and when I put those together, I'll come back at you. Again, we gotta wait till these fully cool down so that we don't have um, the soggy bread issue. So we'll do those a little bit later. Okay, we're just gonna continue on with the theme of breakfast and get those out of the way. Um, if you notice, I did prep a couple extra eggs um, because of the fact that I wanted to have a couple of egg sandwiches for myself just for a little variation this week. Um, next up, we're gonna move to my oatmeal. Since I will have two egg sandwiches, I will only need three oatmeals. So we're just gonna pull these plastic lids off. Now, if you haven't seen any of my videos, um, go back and look on my channel because I do have a couple of oatmeal cook with me's and I've kind of used these lids all the time. I have these plastic lids, um, picked them up. Hold on, I think I might actually still have a box up here. I'm constantly picking these up. Um, they look like this. And they are just plastic storage caps. I find that these are so easy to use when I'm using my mason jars, when I'm, you know, 
prepping my oatmeal because they just come in very handy. You don't have to deal with the, the metal rings and the, the, the caps for those. So pick some of those up. Um, I found those, I think I found those at Menards and I think I've also seen, seen them at Target. So we're gonna go ahead and um, I get asked this question a lot. I have these um, funnels and these are also found in the canning section. So they're very convenient. Um, kind of helps keep me from making a huge mess. So grab a piece of paper and a pen. I will give you a second. I'll talk about the almond milk before I get started. Grab a piece of paper and a pen because if you haven't seen me do these oatmeal jars and you wanna jot down the measurements, now's the time to get that done. Um, I'm using today the Kirkland unsweetened vanilla almond milk. Um, these come in a six pack. Um, I think it's like $7 for a six pack and they do not need to be refrigerated. Um, you refrigerate them after you open them and I found it very convenient. Hopefully I'm getting a good shot of that. Um, I find it very convenient just to have on hand. Um, I just, this is my, um, this one's almost empty, so I grabbed another box, and this is actually my last box of the six. So I'm going to add those to my grocery list, so the next time I run to Costco, I can pick up another box. But um, comes in very handy. I don't know about you, but I don't really keep track of a lot of things that I use, that I have backups on. So it's very handy to have just that extra one and to know to add that to your grocery list once you use your backup. So hopefully that gave you enough time to grab a piece of paper and a pen. So I have what's, I have here um, the old fashioned rolled oats and I buy these again at Costco in the 10 pound container. It comes in two five pound packages and this is the second of my 10 pound and honestly, okay, don't laugh. But um, this is my second 10 pound box and I make a lot of oatmeal apparently. Um, I didn't realize how much I ate until I started making these videos and I'm like, wow, that's a lot of oatmeal. So anyway, didn't mean for my oatmeal section to take 20 minutes. So one third cup of old fashioned rolled oats. So one third cup in each of these containers. And I have these cutesy little jars um, just because I thought they were small and cute and you could also use, let me reach in my cabinet here, hopefully. Nope, I don't seem to have one. Um, I usually use the wide mouth version. Um, these are the pint jars. These are the same exact size. I just, like I said, bought them cause they were cute. They're double the price. So just save yourself the money, get a dozen of the wide mouth pint jars for your oatmeal and you should be all set. Anyway, I'm super chatty today. Um, next up, one packet of Sweet and Low, Slenda, Truvia, whatever your choice may be. I was originally only gonna make two of these jars, but then I decided at the last minute to grab a third jar out and I didn't have the third pack of Splenda, or Sweet and Low in my case. So, I'm just gonna throw a package of this in each. And just so you know, normally it takes me like two minutes to make my oatmeal. But again, I just want to kind of explain some of the tools I was using today because I seem to get a lot of those questions in the comments when I'm making these. Um, next up is I'm gonna throw a splash of um, just vanilla extract, whatever you have. Splash, nice splash in each of my jars. I'm gonna throw in, I have some PB Fit, um, same as PB2. I'm gonna throw in a tablespoon of this. Um, whether you use one tablespoon or two tablespoons, it's still gonna be one point, so I just use a heaping tablespoon in each of these jars. Just to give it that nice, yummy peanut butter flavor as I drop my one cup measuring cup. I'm gonna give that a quick little rinse. Um, so I don't think I mentioned, but today I'm making the peanut butter cookie version of my overnight oats. And in one of my jars, I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of cocoa powder. Um, 
this is just regular cocoa baking powder. I know that Hershey's has one, Nestle has one. So just gonna throw that in one of my jars. What that's gonna do is that is going to take my peanut butter cookie oatmeal and it's gonna make it into no-bake cookie oatmeal. If, if you've never tried the no-bake cookies, I mean, if you have tried, I guess if you never tried, it wouldn't make sense. So if you've tried the no-bake cookies, this one here will have everyone in your office asking what you're eating because it's absolutely delicious. It smells like a no-bake cookie and you feel like you're eating dessert for breakfast. So we have our three jars ready. We have our ingredients. The last thing we need to put in is our almond milk and our water. So I'm going to add in, we have a third cup of oats. Remember we put a third cup in there? So we're gonna put about a half cup to two thirds of a cup of the vanilla almond milk and water combination. I usually do half and half. And it's just a preference. Um, you can use all almond milk. I've never used water, so I don't know how it would be. It probably would just be fine, but um, with just using all water. But a third, a half cup of almond milk, the unsweetened vanilla almond milk is zero points. So it doesn't matter. But like I said, I just thin it down with water just because that's just what I do. So just going to put that in there. Do my last one. then when I get ready to make these during the week when I'm ready to eat them, what I will do is I will throw it in the microwave for one minute and then I will stir it and then I will throw it back in the microwave for 30 seconds and I do that so it doesn't boil over in the microwave. Um, works out perfect. And then sometimes I add a banana, sometimes I don't. Um, I like the bananas in the peanut butter cookie. Uh, it has a really, really good flavor. You wanna add the bananas after you cook it because if you add the bananas while you're cooking it, they turn out really, really mushy and the texture is just not good. Um, I've never added it to my no-bake cookie one, but if you do that, give it a try. Um, put it in the comments below, let me know what you think. So if you make the oatmeal this week, again, comment below. Let me know what you think of it. I know that there's a few people making my oatmeal from time to time, and they seem to really enjoy it. Okay, so we've got our breakfast done. Um, I'll check our list and see what's up next. Okay, our eggs have cooled down, so we're going to go ahead and start assembling the um, egg sandwiches. I'm going to be using the Healthy Life Make sure I get that in there. There you go. The Healthy Life Multi-Grain English Muffins. Um, these are two smart points per English muffin. I have the Velveeta Cheese Slices. Hopefully you're getting a few of those. Um, one smart point each. And then I'm gonna be using the Canadian Bacon on the ones that don't have bacon. I opened the package so it's dripping a little bit. Um, Canadian bacon on the ones that don't have the bacon in them. So I'm going to go ahead and start throwing these together. And I don't know about you, but these never, I mean, I know that you can pull these apart, but it just seems like it takes forever and I tear half of them up. So it just seems like it's easier for me just to go ahead and just slice these as I'm going along. Now, from time to time, my husband will tell me he wants something different, but for now, he's pretty content with these sandwiches. Um, I don't know. I can't really say anything because I take oatmeal almost every day, so it um, it is what it is, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting these together. These come out to be two, three... Four. four smart points for the ones with bacon, three smart points for the ones without bacon. So we're going to just go ahead and start throwing the eggs on here. I need to keep 
these separate so I know which ones are which. Apparently I have an extra egg. I need to grab one more. Hang tight. One more English muffin. I didn't really count. I just, I forgot. I thought I made six eggs and apparently I made seven. No big deal. I have another English muffin. It's just not the whole wheat one. It's um, the other Healthy Life light English muffin. And this is just the white one. So it's not the whole grain or whatever they call that other one. So, get our last egg on here. Now, with the Velveeta cheese, it is one smart point for a whole slice. And I think this one's just a one smart point for a half a slice as well. But with the egg sandwiches, when you heat these up in the microwave, um, they seem to be okay with just a half a slice. So I normally will just put half a slice on each of these. And of course, you tear the little cheese thing off wrong. All right, I'm gonna set this aside and so I don't forget to put these on. The Canadian bacon that I'm using is one smart point for three slices or zero smart points for one slice. So we're just gonna throw one slice on there because it seems to be enough. I mean, why do the overkill on there if you don't have to? I'm having a heck of a time with this cheese today. We're gonna have a half a slice to spread out amongst the little brothers and sisters sitting here. So I'll throw those on his. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in some baggies and get these in the fridge. Um, I've been looking for some containers to put these into, but I have not found the perfect size container. And my husband's lunch bag is not going to accommodate another bigger um, bowl. So still on the hunt. So as soon as I find those, I will let everybody know where I found them and what I'm using because I'm sure that um, all of you could use the same thing. Next up, we're going to go ahead and start my salads, and I'll probably mix up some salad mixes for just the family that we could eat during the week, so I'll probably have some extra stuff. So this week, what I thought I would do is I'm going to make a Southwest chicken salad, and I'm going to make a strawberry poppy seed salad. Um, I have all the ingredients behind me to make this go a little quicker. I want to go ahead and get this romaine chopped up. Um, I have four big things of organic romaine lettuce. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a quick chop and then just throw it in the bowl over here next to me. Um, I normally will just cut them into fours and then start chopping them from there. And I would normally grab my salad spinner, but I'm really too lazy to, to go and pull that out because I don't use it that often. So I have it in my overflow storage in the basement. So we're going to hope for the best and just put it in here and let it drain while we talk and chat and get the rest of our ingredients together and hopefully that drains out enough to where it's not going to be an issue. I know I'm not going to need all of this but I already have some of the romaine lettuce already pulled apart, washed and pulled apart in just the leaves and I used that the other day 
to have a cheeseburger on. So I had a cheeseburger on a lettuce wrap and saved myself, you know, three to five points for that um, for the bun. And you know what? It was really good. I enjoyed it just as much. All right, I have one more to go. And I know you can buy this already cut up, but it seems it seems to be crunchier and much more fresh when you just go ahead and cut it up yourself. And I think I paid, I don't know, maybe four or five dollars at Costco for like six big, huge things of the romaine lettuce. That seems like that should last us this week for a while. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up over here. And then when I get my ingredients out, I'll come back. Okay, so the first salad variation that we're gonna do is a Southwest chicken salad. So I have two mason jars here. I'm just gonna set these here. The first thing we're going to put in is I have some of this oven roasted chicken breast. I can never tell if I'm in the camera. Okay. So I have this oven roasted chicken breast and I'm just going to grab a measuring spoon to scoop this out with. And this chicken breast is zero smart points. Okay, that's gonna take me forever. Okay. That looks good. And as you can tell, that's hitting the bottom of the jar that is frozen, but that's okay. It'll defaw by the time I eat it. Um, I have a can of corn drained and a can of black beans drained. Let's see if you could see those seasonings. Let me pan over just a bit. I don't know if you could see that. If not, I will bring them up. I have a Fiesta lime seasoning on the corn and then the Southwest Chipotle on my black beans. And I just went ahead and drained and rinsed the black beans just to make that quicker and easier so that when I get ready to put these salads together, I don't have to try to figure out, you know, what to do with them or how to have them ready. If I wanna have a quick salad, it's already ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump in probably a quarter cup of black beans in each of the jars on top of the chicken. And then I'm gonna give that a quick little rinse before I stick it down in my jar with my corn. Same thing, just gonna do a half a cup, or I'm sorry, a quarter cup, this is an eighth of a cup. All right, got that in. So, so far we have in our chicken, black beans, and our corn, and the black beans and the corn are both seasoned. Up next, I'm going to grab some cucumbers. Just a couple, maybe three little slices in each. Just to go ahead and cut these in half and drop them in. And hold off on those peppers. I was thinking about putting those in, but I think I'll just wait on those. Next up is I have the cheddar and the mozzarella cheese. And I'm going to, of course I need the same, I don't feel like dragging the next one. I'm gonna rinse out my measuring spoon and I'm gonna throw in an eighth of a cup of the mozzarella in each of these. and then an eighth of a cup of the cheddar. There we go. Next up, we're going to fill up the jars with our romaine lettuce. I 
and just go ahead and shove that in there. Just keep shoving until you can't shove anymore. And these are gonna stay good in your fridge for three to five days. Um, I have taken them to five days, have not had a problem. All right, we got those full. I'll grab some lids in a second and get those covered up. So next up, I'm going to, um, I'll do this off camera so I don't bore you. I have these Santa Fe style strips. So I'm gonna measure out two points of these. Um, here are the stats on those. So I'm gonna measure out two points of those and put them in a baggie so that I can throw those on top of my salad. And then for a dressing, I'm going to take this light ranch and some salsa. And I think, don't quote me, but I think the light ranch is two points. Um, I'll insert it here for two tablespoons. So I'm going to use one tablespoon. And I think that comes out to be one smart point. So one tablespoon in each of these. And then I'm going to take some of this salsa. This is the Tostitos Medium Salsa. And I'm going to mix this in with the ranch and kind of make like a Southwest dressing. So I'm just gonna throw two tablespoons or so in here on top of this. And that's gonna give you plenty of dressing for that salad. And there we go. So I have two of the Southwest ones done. All right, so I'm going to clean this up and give me a second and I will come back to you with the next salad variation. Okay, our last salad is going to be a strawberry poppy seed salad. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some romaine lettuce in our containers. And if you've ever been to Panera, um, this is normally the salad that I order because it's absolutely delicious. So we have our lettuce. We're gonna go ahead and again, use that same chicken. That should be good. Sorry, get my hands a quick little rinse there. All right, and this is where the fun begins. Next up, we're going to add in some strawberries. And if you've never had the salad, either make this one or go get one because they are absolutely delicious. It's a perfect summer salad. The next thing we're gonna add in is I have some, I think they're Walmart brand, no sugar added mandarin oranges. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these and drain these. Um, before I get that one started, I'm going to go ahead and just jump to the pineapple. I have drained some crushed pineapple in its own pineapple juice, so it's um, zero spark points. And I had that draining over here to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some of that here. And I'm estimating that to be about a quarter cup of, um, it was like three tablespoons when I pulled it out of the can. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the mandarin oranges now and get those drained. Okay, 
go ahead and add those on here. And these are really good. Um, I like to add these to a lot of my salads, even in the Southwest salad, this is good. Just kind of give it a little, little sweet taste. Okay, um, I have chopped walnuts here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add in probably a tablespoon of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw those in here. A tablespoon there and a tablespoon on this one. Isn't that looking yummy? Check those salads out. Um, and on that, I am going to use the Opa Strawberry Poppy Seed. Um, it's a yogurt, Greek yogurt dressing. And this one is fabulous. So two tablespoons is two points and three tablespoons is going to cost you four points. So let me tell you a little trick that I use. It's two on that one. One, two in that one. And then what I do is I grab just shy of a tablespoon of water and dump it in there just to thin it out a bit. And it makes the dressing go a little further if I shake it, it will just mix quicker. Um, it makes it go a little further and you don't really notice the difference and you're getting a little more dressing for the same amount of points. So, there you go, can't even tell I put the water in. Okay, so those are gonna be my lunches this week. Um, I have four salads and I also still have um, my bean burritos. So I will have my bean burritos as well. So, okay, um, let me check my list and see what else we have left. I know we're in the home stretch now. Um, I checked my list. I think we're done for the day. I was going to go ahead and make my um, my buffalo chicken dip, but I'm going to film that on its own video because I have made that before in my meal prep videos and everybody has been asking for a standalone video for that one so it's easily accessible. You can find it easier. So I'm going to go ahead and make that one on its own. And then um, hopefully I'll get this one edited and get this one up and moving tomorrow. So I'll try to get this posted by Monday. And then if I do my buffalo chicken dip later, I'll um, try to get that posted by Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday-ish time frame. So I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me today while I did my um, breakfast and lunch meal prep. Most of the dinner things that I have, they're pretty simple. So I'm not really gonna take the time to um, walk you through those. I think that those are pretty self-explanatory. Um, now, here's the thing, as I go through my week, I um, will post a lot of my pictures of my food and things that I'm eating along with the points on my Instagram channel. Um, my Instagram channel is will be in the comments below, and it's also just, just the same as my YouTube channel, it's just it's Prep Whisperer. So you can follow me on Instagram and follow along with the things that I'm eating, and you can see how I prep things I'll try to go back through and include points in with some of the final items on this video. Um, if I don't do that, um, again, keep an eye on my Instagram. I'll be posted in there. All right, again, hopefully you found something that you can use. Um, try one of those salads. They're super good. And have a great day. And I'm not as cute as my grandkids, so um, like, share, follow, um, ring the bell. I'm not even sure how they said it, but... Um, you get the drift. All right. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. Bye.